it turns out that the peak for hydrogens are split by the adjacent non-equivalent hydrogens. A peak is split by the adjacent non-equivalent hydrogens. If a set of equivalent hydrogens is adjacent to n non-equivalent hydrogens, then the peak will be split into n plus 1 subpeaks. This is something else that's easier to understand with some examples. So let's take a look at some examples. I think we already saw here that there would be two peaks. Now let's focus on peak A. Now, how many adjacent hydrogens are there? Adjacent non-equivalent hydrogens. That would be N. Well, here N is 2 because these hydrogens here are adjacent to these two hydrogens. So N would be 2 for group A. You only count the adjacent non-equivalent hydrogens. After all, each of these hydrogens is also on the same carbon as two other hydrogens, but those are all equivalent to each other. You're only going to be split by the non-equivalent hydrogens. Now, what would n plus 1 be? That would be 3. And that means that peak A is actually going to be split into three subpeaks. Peak A is actually going to be split into three subpeaks. So roughly speaking, it'll look like this. I'm not going to try to draw things exactly on the board, but roughly speaking, it would have three subpeaks. That's called spin, spin, splitting. Well, let's try to do the same thing for group B over here. Now, group B, how many non-equivalent adjacent hydrogens are there adjacent to group B? Three. Three on the left and three on the right, mm -hmm. which makes six you need to count the total number of non-equivalent adjacent hydrogens. So in fact, n here shouldn't be 3, it should be 6. And then n plus 1 would be 7, which means that peak b is going to have 7 sub peaks. It's going to be hard to draw, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm not really going to be able to get these at the right horizontal place, but anyway, this is split into 7 subpeaks. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, sometimes the peaks on the side are so small, it's hard to see whether they exist or not. Uh, sometimes it's hard to count how many subpeaks there are because they might be very low above the baseline. But theoretically, we're going to get 7 subpeaks here. Okay, this is the idea behind spin-spin splitting. So now we have to letter all the hydrogens, and then for each group of hydrogens, we have to identify its n. And then we figure out its n plus 1. And that tells us the splitting. Okay, okay so we need to do some examples.
many peaks would we get here? Two. What would n be from group A? Two. Three, sorry. Well, it's two and then n plus one is three. That's right, so we should say n is two. Mm -hmm. n plus n plus one is three. Mm -hmm. So how many peaks will this be split into? Sub peaks? Three. Three. In fact, that's called a triplet. So here we would have a triplet. And how about here? What would n be for this group? Three. So n plus one would be? Four. And that's called a quartet. This would be split into four subpeaks. <laughs> Good. figure out how many peaks here. <clears throat> so we're going to have one, three. There's no stereo centers here, so we don't have to worry about that CH2 exception. These are all just the, the three different groups. What would N be for this group? Two. So N plus one would be? Three. And this would be a triplet. And let's do the one on the right. What would n be for group C? Two. So n plus one three. is three, and the splitting would be a triplet. Right. All right, now, how many hydrogens are adjacent to group B? Four. One, two, three, four. That's right. So n plus one would be? Five. And then the splitting would be? A quintet. That's right. A quintet. Okay, now here there come, start to be some complications because notice these two hydrogens on the left are not equivalent to these two hydrogens on the right. right. So this technique may or may not work. But what we've basically done is we've just counted all of the adjacent hydrogens as if they were the same. Sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. So this gets into some complications here. Sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. I guess one thing we have to talk about here is the coupling constant. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, if we look at this triplet here, I don't have to worry about exactly where it's going to be, but if you look at this triplet, so we know that these are going to be split. The coupling constant is the distance between adjacent peaks. The coupling constant is the distance between adjacent peaks. So a typical coupling constant might be, say, 8 hertz. So that would mean that this distance would be 8, and this distance would be 8. Mm -hmm. The coupling constant is the distance between adjacent peaks. So notice that in a triplet, if the coupling constant is 8 hertz, the left-hand peak is actually 16 hertz from the right-hand peak. Yeah. Two 8 hertz distances. OK. It turns out that for alkanes, uh, I believe that the coupling constants are usually pretty close to 7 or 8. Coupling constants are usually close to 7 or 8 for an alkane. Um, now, the important point is, these hydrogens here are going to be split by the group A hydrogens, and they're also going to be split by the group C hydrogens. So when can we just say that they're split by four adjacent hydrogens? Well, the group B is going to be group split by group A with a coupling constant. And then they're going to be split by group C with a coupling constant. Well, if the two splittings have the same or similar coupling constants, then we can just treat these two groups like they're similar to each other and just say N is four overall. On the other hand, Let's say that the splitting with group A has a small coupling constant, and the splitting with group C has a much bigger coupling constant. 
then, you can have, then there's a more complicated way to figure out the splitting. So the only time that we can treat all of these hydrogens and put them in one big end group is when their coupling constants are the same as each other. However, usually, like I said, usually in alkanes, the coupling constants are pretty close to seven or eight. So it's probably a pretty good approximation here to say that the two coupling constants on both sides will be similar, and therefore we can just treat this as if it's next to four adjacent hydrogens, even though the two on the left are not the same as the two on the right. All right, we'll have to look at some more examples to see how this works and see if we're ready for the test here. 